That came out better than I expected. That came out really good. Hey guys, I got a treat today. I was able to pick this up at Best Buy for $200 off for their holiday season deals here. I believe it rolled over from their Black Friday deal. Um, this, believe, cost me $5.99 at Best Buy. So the original price, they had it at $7.99. And when I looked on Walmart, it was about, about the $700, $600 range or so as well. So if you guys are looking to pick this up, I would definitely check it out. Some deals online see if you can find a best buy that has this on sale still this was actually the last one they had in stock so let's break into it and see what we can see so on top we got some packaging lots of plastic with a multi-language set here all oh, this is for uh transportation bag so they give you a bag to transport it all in so you don't have any ink link anywhere let's see we got an installation disc it looks like Get this open quick start guide Also in another language. And it looks like this is their warranty paperwork here. And this is just talking about opening up one of the trays. All right. So put the English quick start guide on the side for now. Just gotta break these tops off. Slide the side out. This looks like it has some ink in it. Have that taped as well. Alright, so inside we have a gray. So they use the gray ink to uh, do gradients in your pictures. This is a dye ink black. And a pigment ink black. So it does have two different blacks. And of course we have our other ones, yellow, magenta, and cyan. All really nicely packaged. And this looks like this is our power cable. I'm actually going to cut this box away. Okay, see here, I just cut the front face off this box. I'm going to slide this right out. Get underneath it.
right, first things first, let's go ahead and remove all the protective film tape. Alright, next thing we're going to be doing is plugging it in. Next, we'll be turning it on. Now, it wants us to select a language, so we're going to tap on English. And it's given us a QR code that we can scan. The QR code is for setting up your printer with your mobile phone if you want to be able to print from your phone. But uh, we're probably not going to do that right now. We're going to work on getting it printing from the desktop. And uh, so we're going to continue without the app. So the next thing we need to do is fill up the printer with some ink. So it does have a locking feature. When you pick it all the way up, it will lock down. This will be our ink cap. So it wants us to start off by filling up some ink here. So I'm gonna get these in order. So the first thing we're gonna fill is this black pigment ink. I'm just gonna pop up the blue cover. Twist the cap off. Well, not that cap. Did not want to twist the whole piece off. There we go. So I had to hold on this plastic ring on the bottom here to get this fill cap lid to come off here. Because the whole cap itself ended up coming off on that one. So there we are. And these are a autofill. You don't want to squeeze the bottles. So we just tip it upside down. Press it into the slot and just let it fill. And you'll be able to see the ink level rising. And it should auto stop. There we go, it has stopped. So now we're gonna go ahead and go through and fill the rest. Today is tomorrow. I had to pause that video, but continuing on, we have all the inks filled up now. So now we just need to close this back up and follow the on-screen instructions. So it says press and hold okay for five seconds.
All right. Now it says make sure that all the ink colors are filled up, proper lines. Yes, everything looks good. Do not load paper until it initialize is complete. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit start. This says it should be about a seven minute process. Do not unplug the uh, printer while it's doing this or open up any, the scanner part or the printer head. So we'll hit start and we'll let this initialize. All right, so it looks like the initialization is complete. It is saying to proceed to the print adjustment. And I believe we're gonna have to load some paper. So I do have just some plain copy paper we're gonna use. So we're gonna lower the front cover. And actually it looks like I missed one little spot. little protective foam down in there I did not see all right so this is where we'll be putting our normal paper more tape all right so in goes that go ahead and throw this cassette back in place and I will throw this back in place. All right, now we're going to go to adjustment. So align the printer to get the best print quality. All right, adjust recommended. Perform a print head nozzle check to check print quality. Okay, let's print. Load letter A4 size paper to nozzle check pattern. All right, we have letter in there. Let's hit print. You see we actually have a little light that displays. All right, now it says check the print pattern and select the closer result. All right, so let's see how we did here. Perform five types of alignment in order. Load six sheets of letter into the cassette too. We'll say okay. So, looking at this here, we do have a little bit of jagged lines and stuff. So we're going to try to go through this print alignment and see if we can't fix some of that. Okay, I just loaded in a few more sheets of copy paper. So let's hit print. Alright, now it's saying select the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. So these are our options here. So no gap or dark line. All right, so after looking at this, I'm gonna have to say five for both columns. So over here, I'm gonna select five and hit proceed. And then for the second pattern, we'll hit print. Okay. So for this one, it printed out two separate sheets, a bunch of different squares. So we're going to be looking at all these and choosing the square with the fewest streaks. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera very much, but for the first one, we're going to go between four and six look the best to me. And I believe six will be our winner. So, for number one, we'll select six and proceed to number two. 
And for number two, we're going to go with four. Uh, four looks like it might have a slight overlap, a darker color. But three looks like it has just a tiniest little white piece in the inside. Very hard to tell on camera, as you can tell. But we're going to go through the rest of these and select the best squares. And I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay, I went through all of these, selected the best ones I could find out of there. Now we're going to go to the print alignment pattern 3 of 5. We'll select print. Okay, we're back to this kind of style here. It says select the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. You see some of them are a little crooked. Some are a little more straight. So we'll go through and pick the best out of the two columns. So the first one I'm going to say 6. So I'll select 6 on the... Uh, screen here and hit proceed to number two and for my second one I would also have to select between six or seven I don't know if you can tell they're jagged a little bit until you get to here and they're very straight and they're very similar to each other so I think for this one I will select seven seven just seems a little bit cleaner so, increase the number to 7 and hit proceed. And now we'll go on to the fourth pattern. Alright, so the next pattern is having us choose the rectangles that are not separated or overlapped. So, again, probably hard on camera, but in overlap you'll see a little bit of a darker line. And then down here at the bottom you kind of see a little bit of white coming through where the rectangles touch. So we'll have to pick one in between here. That looks the best with no overlap. Well, they're all very close in the center. Seven being the furthest away, one being the closest to, to each other. So I'm just going to go dead center and hit four. Pre-select it at four. Hit proceed. Now it's going to do our last pattern. All right. So again, we have another rectangle. Not separated or overlapped. And they look to be a very similar to the cyan colored ones. Or seven it has a slight separation and one has a slight overlap. So looking at this, I believe number four again will probably be our best bet. So we have four selected. We'll hit proceed. And it says your print head alignment complete. You can adjust again from maintenance. We'll hit OK. So now we're at the home screen. Okay, so now that we have the print head aligned and the ink flowing and everything's ready, we're going to go ahead and install the software. They do give us a disk to install. If you do not have a CD drive, you can get the software from their website. And I'll show you both of those. So let's head over to the computer. So if you have a PC like mine that does not have a CD drive, you could either get one of these external drives. They're pretty cheap and you can throw Blu-rays in them. They read and write discs. So this is pretty useful if you have a type of gaming computer that does not have a CD drive. Otherwise you download it from the website. Okay, so for getting our software installed, the first way we'll check is from their website. So for the US, we'll go to our search bar and we will go to www.epson.com forward slash support forward slash ET oops eighty five fifty. Okay, and then now from here, we can see downloads, select your operating system, Windows 10, 64-bit would be mine, but as you can see, they go down pretty far, and then you'll be able to download from there. Uh, we're actually going to check out the installation disk since I do have the CD drive. Okay, so the CD 
has been loaded in and now it's saying run install navi.exe so we'll go ahead and do that select yes okay this is just their license agreement you can go through and read all this if you would like to we'll hit accept Now we want to select options. So it says allow software usage information to be collected. No. Nope. Express product registration. Mm, we will keep that one on and we'll keep the download latest software. So we'll hit next. All right, so now it says check the following. Make sure that your printer is turned on, which it is. Have you filled the ink takes? Yes. We'll hit next. So now it looks like it's going to go ahead and install the required software. So wait for this to be done. Okay, so it wants us to select our connection method. So we want to use our wireless network to connect to this because the printer is not located near my computer. So we're going to connect via wireless network. And then we'll hit next. So now it's going to have us connect by entering a network name and password manually. So I'll go ahead and do this real quick. Make sure the printer is on and no messages about performing operations appear on the control panel. So let's go check that real fast. So here we are at the control panel. There is nothing showing up except the home screen. So let's continue. Okay, now that we checked the screen, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And it says on the printer, select these connection buttons on the top on the printer's home screen. So let's go do that. All right, back on the panel, it wants to select these here and we'll select our Wi-Fi. We'll start setup. Connect via wireless router. And it's gonna search for our network. Okay, so we did get it connected to our network here. We have to select your network, enter your password if you have one. And now it popped up a screen for customer research. Um, we're not going to have them collect any type of usage data, so we're going to go ahead and reject it. And now that we are connected, we're just going to hit the home screen. And let's head back over to the computer and see what's next. Okay, we are back at the computer, so let's hit next. Hit next. Next on that. We've already done all this and we selected we entered our passcode we hit ok we hit setup and it was completed so let's continue on Okay, so now it wants us to select the software to install. So we probably need most of these. I don't really think we need the manuals. We can always find those. Uh, Epson Photo Plus, we'll keep that just in case. So, And then the required software, of course, is going to auto install. You cannot deselect or select that. So let's go ahead and install this. Okay, so now it wants us to print a test page, which we've kind of already done on the printer side, but let's just see if it works over wireless. So let's hit print test page. And here is the Epson right there. And it just 
disappeared, so it's probably already finished printing. Let's go check that out. Okay, here we are at the printer. It says printing complete. This is the test page that gave us. You have finishing, finished setting up your printer. There we go. So it actually looks slightly fuzzier than the way that printed out, but we'll mess with that later. Okay, we've checked out that test page, so now let's hit next. So this is our registration. Uh, you can enter all this. I guess this would be uh, your software updates, probably I would imagine any type of warranty, you'd probably want to have this registered as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and register this real quick. All right, now it says, thank you. We have successfully registered. So let's hit close. And it says setup is complete. So we'll hit finish. And there we are. So let's uh, go ahead and try testing, printing a small picture just on copy paper. So I'm going to go to Epson's website and let's try nabbing a picture of a uh, shack here. So Windows Shift S, going to take that, let's open this up and we will save this to our desktop. And let's open this screenshot and there we are so let's go ahead and try to print this so you want to print there's our ET8550 orientation we'll leave it as landscape one copy eight and a half by 11 11 that's right plain paper uh, photo size we'll leave it as a full page and uh, we'll have fill page. So it's gonna be a full piece of paper worth. Let's hit print. There we are. Well, let's go check out that uh, piece of paper and see how it turned out. Here we are. This is about what I expected of a piece of copy paper. Nothing super fancy. No bright vibrant colors, a little bit fuzzy. I mean, that looks about right. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now let's uh, let's try putting in a real piece of photo paper and try printing out a high res photo. Okay, seeing that it is the holidays, we are gonna try to print out this picture here. This would be on a 13 by 19 piece of photo paper. So that's A3 plus size. So we wanna go to print going to print this in portrait we're going to go to letter size or the paper size here and we're going to find a3 plus and we're going to try to select a paper so let's go look at our paper type So the paper I'm looking at using is going to be this Canon Pro Platinum Glossy Photo Paper. So we'll select a glossy photo paper on the printing settings. All right, so for this, uh, we have a ultra premium photo paper glossy and a premium photo paper glossy. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which one that would be, but let's try the ultra premium. We'll say full page. Uh, we'll say normal mar margins, fill the page. Under more settings, let's go to the best color mode. We'll leave it in color. Borderless printing is on. We'll hit OK. And then we'll hit print. But before that, we need to load our paper. So let's head back over there, load the paper, and we'll hit print. For loading this larger paper, uh, we will not be able to use the front tray. We'll have to use the back, so we'll pop the top. Mix 
extend this out. Now we'll go ahead and open up our paper. This is the size of paper we'll be working with. It's about the size of the printer. This is 13 by 19. So let's grab us a single sheet. So this is the actual paper here. We'll try not to touch the glossy side. You can see this side's glossy and that side's quite matte. So we'll have glossy side facing us as we load it. has been loaded in and now it is wanted us to select our size of paper select the size and type of paper loaded all right so we're going to want to do that and we need to find a3 plus there's a3 so we'll just go to a user to find and we will say this is going to be 12.95 okay and then our length will be 19 okay and we'll hit okay now we have a user defined as a size but we want to select a paper type so under paper type we will set this up as, let's see, we are a Pro Platinum Glossy, so we'll just do a premium, or do the Ultra Glossy. We'll select that because that's what we're going to use on our print settings. And we'll, we're actually going to favorite this. And we will set that. So, oh, okay, so Super B is a 3 plus premium glossy. But that's okay. Okay, so I just went back in here. I changed it to Super B, a 3 plus. That'll be our paper size. So we're going to go home. Now it knows that that paper back there is the right size. So now let's go print that and we'll watch this print out and see kind of how fast that is. We do have it on the best quality, so it might take a while. That came out better than I expected. That came out really good. And without setting up a profile and just guessing on the print settings, that came out really nice. Now, I don't make prints uh, professionally at all, but out of the box for someone who wants to just print something out on a large piece of paper like this as a portrait for your home, I mean, this does really, really well. That's intentionally out of focus from the photo. Everything down here is in focus, and it came out really well. Very pleased with that print quality. It did take, you know, uh, eight minutes or so to print this piece of paper out, but uh, I'm very pleased with the results. So there you guys have it. This has been the Epson EcoTank ET8550. Very happy with the photo results. Um, for us in our little Etsy shop, um, I think we're gonna mostly use it just for stickers and things like that, stuff we can put on large format type things. But uh, 
my days of going to the store and having some prints printed out are probably over, seeing as uh, this thing prints out some great looking photos. And this is without, you know, any type of uh, profile or anything like that. I'm sure there's people out there who do uh, prints and have way more knowledge than I do that would probably even get something to print out even nicer. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, things I'm going to hang in my home, uh, this works fantastic. So thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, if it's still on sale, this is a pretty great printer. I mean, especially if you just want to use it in home just for doing this stuff, that's amazing. Um, if you're looking to make a little business out of it, I can definitely see some real potential in this printer for that as well. So if you guys want to see some more stuff, uh, things in my shop, I mostly laser engraving right now um, but when we get some stickers made i'll definitely make some videos on this and making some stickers as well so thank you guys and i'll catch you next time